Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Jim Rugg's highly anticipated Hulk Grand Design. I'm super excited. I have been waiting for this book for months and so it's finally here. I cannot wait to show it to you. Um, subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Okay, so Hulk Grand Design is by Jim Rugg. Um, you know, uh, Eisner award-winning artist, uh, street angel, aphrodisiac, uh, variant covers for Ed Piskor's, uh, Red Room, uh, co-host of Cartoonist Kayfabe, uh, where they, he, along with fellow Eisner award winner, um, Ed Piskor, two great cartoonists in their own right, um, critique and review comics, do interviews, and um, they also are creators themselves. Um, it was announced uh, what feels like forever ago that Jim Rugg was going to follow in the footsteps of Tom Scioli's Fantastic Four Grand Design and Ed Piscor's X-Men Grand Design and do his dream gig, which was Hulk Grand Design. Apparently Hulk is his favorite Marvel comic book which is very cool. I'm a lifelong Hulk fan. I love the Hulk. Um, I definitely feel that this project has sort of hopefully reignited some Hulk fever a little bit and reminded us all just how much we love the Hulk and why the Hulk is so cool. So, uh, issue one, Monster. There's going to be two issues, Bookends, Monster, and Madness, um, of course, to be collected. A little on the fence about whether or not... Um, I think I'm pretty sure they're going to release a treasury sized edition. I'm a little on the fence about getting it. I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, <clears throat> this variant cover by Ed Piscor is very cool. Of course, it's a an homage uh, to Todd McFarlane's um, infamous uh, Hulk cover that has Wolverine on it and Hulk in the reflection. Ed kind of switched it up and did like Wolverine in his original costume, you know, his first appearance with the Hulk and then did the gray Hulk and the reflection. So that's cool. Um, he did a lot of this. I don't know. It's like, you see this like sort of, uh, pigment dot kind of coloring like that's to give it like this old effect. I don't know, to the trained eye, you know, I mean, it's cool because it captures that old school look of coloring, but it's easily identifiable to me as kind of a gimmick, as sort of like trying to be that look. So I don't know, somehow it kind of loses something in that effect for me when they purposely like sort of distress something or recreate an old printing look that happened naturally in the first place. Um, I do like this cover. I think it's very cool. Um, I wanted the the regular one by Jim Rugg, but oddly they didn't have any more at my, where I picked this up. And um, the only reason is because I, you know, like Jim's blood, sweat, and tears went into the interiors of this book. So I just would rather have a cover by the interior artist always. Um, very cool. It's funny because I feel like, I feel like this falls under what would have been like a prestige book back in the day or a bookshelf format book that they called them. And, um, it's on like newsprint. And I think that's to capture a lot of like the techniques and sort of look and aesthetic that, uh, Jim Rugg was trying to bring to the book. So I'm cool with that. Um, I was a little disappointed to see like house ads. I wish it would just kind of like not have that, but... I guess that's what collected editions are for. Speaking of which, like I said, um, uh, I'm thinking they'll do a treasury sized edition. And um, I was expecting tons of like great money shots in here. Cause I feel like that's something that the cartoonist guys always talk about. You know, it's sort of like an image comics rule, like at least one money shot on a page. In, in other words, like draw the hell out of one panel and just sort of tell the story in the rest or get the meet your deadline. But, um, so Grand Design is basically like a retelling um, of 
a comic book, a certain history of a comic book character. Um, I think Jim Rugg is doing from the beginning to like the end of Peter David's run, his tenure run, very infamous, very amazing. Uh, tons of great stuff happened. Tons of great artists worked on the Hulk over the years. Jim Rugg, it's interesting because I think one of the strengths of the the gr grand design format is sort of like giving a singular vision to, um, you know, like, like I feel like Ed Piscor just pretty much like told the story and his style straight up. There were a lot of sort of homages, but they were done a lot um, in his own style. And I feel like a lot of what Jim Rugg tries, tries to do is like sort of mimic not just the poses or or sort of like, uh, you know, the imagery from the prior comic books, but the actual aesthetic of the artist as well. Like you can definitely see that as a Kirby, um, you know, Hulk versus Herb Trimpey, um, Marie Severin, you know, maybe I'm getting them wrong. I don't know, Sal Buscema should be in there somewhere. I like this, I think that's very striking. Great ad for this Electra Dan Panosian cover. Like, uh, Dan Panosian's art is so amazing. You may remember him from Profit back in the day, but he's definitely, like, evolved into this, like, just beautiful, like, killer classic-looking artist. Like, so much mad respect for him. Um, it's funny, because I go kind of back and forth on this, too. Like, a lot of it... I mean, some of the problem of like really old comic books is they can tend to be a little boring and sometimes I think if you follow that a little too closely it not only recaptures the essence but some of the boringness of it I think some of the strength of Jim Rugg's art does lie when he's like super like uh homaging or um trying to capture the look of somebody else's art some of it's just a little flat and plain um he's definitely like uh a great storyteller i feel but sometimes um <clears throat> some of his art is very like underground and sort of indie looking and not <laughs> very pretty um but i do love his art i mean it's great like i said he's a great storyteller i think the interesting thing about these grand designs is I'm wondering like if you just hand this to like the lay person on the street if they're like totally into it totally getting it like totally loving it I think a lot of it depends on like I I feel like I became a Hulk fan or like like very early on you know because of the tv show and the cartoons and just the coolness of the character but as a like monthly reader of the book. I think, uh, honestly, maybe John Burns run. Um, so this is done and split up into two 40 page parts. The monster being the first ish issue and then the next one is gonna be the madness. And um, it's just basically like covering his entire history. It's funny cause I know this is obviously all based on, you know, facts of things that happen with of course, you know, Jim Rugg's shorthand his editing, choosing what events need to belong or should be highlighted. And um, I, I think he did a great job of sort of weaving it together because a lot of this stuff I don't really know as a reader. I mean, I know the history just because I know the character in a lot of ways. So sometimes I feel like some of it could be a little bit lost. Like, I feel like had I actually read some of these stories, I mean, I definitely identify more with or get more excited about the parts if they're from actual stories that I had read. You know, um, I do think that's a lot of fun and uh, strength of Ruggs' art is when he's definitely, like, homaging or just, like, leaning into certain art styles or trying to portray certain aesthetics. Um... You know, I think he definitely goes more into the pop culture sort of aspect of things. And it sort of shines through a lot with this art. And I'm getting a little bit of an education about the Hulk that, you know, I didn't 100% have. Like Doc Sampson. I love in comic books, and maybe this is just life in general. I don't know. People are kind of buttholes. 
And like, I love how Doc Samson is kind of just a jerk. He cures Banner and then he like, he steals some of the gamma radiation that he siphoned off. He exposes himself to it so he be can, can become Doc Samson. Like, how shady is that? Where was, there was a picture that I meant to point out earlier. I feel like, you know, I sort of, I feel like, you know, with all the homaging and stuff, sometimes I, I feel like um, maybe Jim Rugg's own personal style gets a little lost at times. Like, I feel like this is sort of like a definitely, like, I want to say a Michael Golden Hulk just from an image that I can't get out of my brain looking at that. So it just kind of makes me wonder. Like, because that looks like a very, very Kirby Doctor Doom there. And that's actually very cool there. But I wonder, like, I mean, it's crazy because that's, I feel like that must have been drawn, like, much larger. Because that, I don't know. I mean, these could just be, I'm sure they're just homages. I'm sure they're just, like, copied or traced or whatever. But it's fun. But even, like, some, like, I don't know. Like, I just, I I want a little bit more explosive art. Like, I think it's hard sometimes with these grand designs because I feel like they're so condensed and so, like, cliff notes and so much is put in, you know, 500 issues into 80 pages is, you know, a big ask. And I think it he definitely pulls it off and it comes together quite well. If nothing else, like, it's hella enjoyable and just, like, a fun read just like a popcorn movie and just kind of a great celebration of the Hulk. I mean, it's definitely a labor of love. Um, you know, I like, I like this. I do. I mean, I think it's cool, but it's just not, you know, it's kind of like when <laughs> I, I, I feel like they're never different enough from the original to be, I don't know. And I mean, I've done my share fair of homages. I, I don't know how I feel about homages, you know, uh, and or swipes, whatever you want to call them. Because it's like, I mean, yeah, it's cool, but it's kind of just like a replica of that, like, but sort of in this ballpoint pen on notebook paper, which is cool. I mean, it's, it's cool, but... You know, I feel like when Art Adams does, like, an homage cover, like, oh my gosh, she brings, like, such a different dynamic to it that just, like, um, <clears throat> Julia Roberts, believe it or not, um, I saw her do an interview for Ocean's 13, I think that was the first one that they did, right? Oh no, Ocean's 11, my bad. And, you know, she was saying that the key was that you know, nobody wanted to do it unless it was better than the original. So you, you should never remake a bad or a good movie. I guess Ocean's Eleven, the original, wasn't that great. Or maybe just lent itself to improvement. So I just think sometimes that if you're doing, like, some homage or something, it just better be, like, so crumb tight that it's amazing. Like, this is cool, but it definitely smacks of something that is, like very copied from another artist's image. Like that's, I mean, is this a Herb Trumpy? I'm, I'm, I'm not as versed in my pre-burn Hulk artist as I should be. Next issue, I'm going to be all over that, guys. But see, like, this looks very, like, you know, Kirby, very, you know, much like, I don't know, swipes of other art there. I mean, I've definitely seen that Hulk face, right? This is a very cool panel. I love this. This like is illustrating the devastation a Hulk can do us to a city. Got a little cameo from Jimmy Carter going on here. And um, this is fun. Lots of like daredevil action fighting the Hulk there. I don't know, sometimes, you know, I, um, and I'm going to catch flack, so sorry. Sorry, everybody. Sorry in advance, but I have to give, you know, I can't be like 100%, uh, but here's back-to-back -back criticisms. Some of it feels slightly rushed, and I don't know, like some, some pages I feel like 
it could just be a little more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that. Um, and then here's some, like my, like this is definitely like, like especially here, this is super obvious, but this, that's definitely like John B. Seema's She-Hulk panel. Like, I just don't understand like how just drawing like almost an exact copy is like exciting or I mean, you know, and and it's weird to say that, but I, I just feel like in some ways it's a missed opportunity because you don't, you would never take this and like, I don't know, it just looks like Jim Rugg drawing John B. Seema to me. So it's like, once again, like the originality of Jim Rugg's art gets a little lost in it. That's all I'm saying, guys. I know. Like, it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. I still like it. Like, if you're going for the Lichtenstein, you know, pop art kind of angle, I guess I can appreciate that. Um, I mean, overall, like, high marks. Like, I think it's, it's like, very well done, very entertaining. Like, I didn't get bored reading it. Like, it's definitely holds your interest. And it's just a fun sort of trip through, you know, the journey of the Incredible Hulk comic book career. Um, this is interesting here because this is, like, the Hulk with Rocket Raccoon. So, this is, like, uh, probably, like, riffing on some Mike Mignola art. Very busy, very colorful panel, I'll say that. Kind of fun to see Rocket Raccoon. He gets a little lost in there. Once again, I'd rather have like a big money shot of Rocket Raccoon or something. I know everyone's a critic, right? It is fun to see Sasquatch from Alpha Flight. I love Alpha Flight, so that's fun. And it's funny, he's riffing on, I remember like Sasquatch's appearance, like I think in, it must have been the Hulk, obviously, but how I always thought how weird he looked and uh, Rug captured the weirdness of the way he looked perfectly right there. I think maybe drawn by Sal Buscema. Um, this is a fun panel. It's very like a uh, traditional comic book. I don't know, So I feel a little pulled out by some of these weird panels here. Like, I don't know, I feel like I'm reading like a uh, an encyclopedia or something when I just see like this random like cover recreation. Is it like just a super quick trace or I don't know. It just feels a little off to me. I just almost would rather have like a stat of the original cover there if you're gonna pull something like that. And, but if nothing else, um, I don't know if I didn't know about her, but I'm currently obsessed with Ms. Modoc because the only thing more horrifying than Modoc could be like his female love interest. So I love him punching him in the head. Like some of the, the dialogue in here is classic around here sometimes. Like I feel like in a way it's sort of comical, but in another way, like it very much captures the essence of comic book dialogue from the appropriate eras and how kind of ridiculous it is. Get your mind off her, Modoc. I love it. That's like so punny and like, cause he's a big, you know, mind basically, but um, very punny and um, hilarious. And this is from Secret Wars. And I see maybe, I don't know, maybe on one hand, it's like, I feel like since I have such an emotional invest investment in it, maybe that therein lies my, I hate to use the word disappointment cause it's such a gutting word, but like, this is, like, uh, basically covering Hulk's involvement in Secret Wars. And I just, you know, was obsessed with Secret Wars. So that just falls a little short and disappointing for me. Just like the, you know, like, first appearance of Wolverine in She-Hulk here. I don't know. It just seemed a little... anticlimactic. That's fun, a cool visual there. I like the bright colors. That's a very cool Doctor Strange. This actually, this whole panel here makes me, would make me love to see Jim Rugg do like an issue or series of Doctor Strange. I think that he could really bring sort of that cool psychedelic and imagery to life. 
and capture like, I don't know, the suave debonair and I love the eyeball on his forehead. That's cool. I mean, overall, thumbs up. Good job, Jim. I'm like super excited about this. I'm glad it finally came out. It did not disappoint. It definitely fills all the, ticks all the boxes of everything that makes grand designs great and unique in their own way. Um, here's like a little guide of sort of referencing the issues where these events took place and a little bit of context on that. I like that inclusion of that. The design of the book is great. I know Jim worked very hard on the overall aesthetic of the book and was allowed, you know, um, to sort of run with that kind of thing. So that's very cool. Next, Jim Hulk, Grand Design Madness. Um, the second and final part of this great Grand Design by Jim Brug that we've so eagerly anticipated. Congratulations. The love is pouring from the pages. Job well done. Can I, like, I'm actually, like, way more excited about issue two because we're looking forward to John Byrne, Peter David, Todd McFarlane, Liam Sharp, uh, Jeff Purvis, Dale Keown, Dale Keown, Dale Keown, probably one of my favorite Hulk artists. Um, so I cannot wait for that one. But this has been a lot of fun. I'm so glad it's finally out. Sorry for the spoilers, but I, you know, I was thinking, I, even though I forgot to say spoilers, but I was gonna say, you can't really spoil a grand design because it's all set in stone before you turn the first page. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel, please, if you haven't already. Hit that like button, share my content, and I will bring you some more later. Thanks, guys.